So uh, the gardens here were started about uh, 10, 12 years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, the beehives we've had since 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, the original beehive started at the Royal York in Toronto with uh, the chef there. And since then, we've now got 24 hotels across Fairmont, mm -hmm. across the world, that have got beehives. Uh, from here to Toronto, like I said, Vancouver, Yangcheng Lake. It, it has become a corporate uh, initiative to. Be, be friendly. How do you make guests that come from so many places in the world happy or do you think that they want local cuisine more so than cuisine from where they're from? You know, how do you how do you make someone happy that where if you had a standalone restaurant you could cook whatever you want yeah. and and be local and locally sourced and things like that but at a, a hotel like this where so many so many of the guests come from around the world is that ever a problem or or how do you please all those people it it, it is a fine delicate balance uh we i don't believe people want to come from other places to try uh cuisine from their own country I'm right thinking. They come to San Francisco because they want to try the West Coast cuisine. They want right. to try what uh, everybody in the city is doing. Right. So it's not that hard in uh, being able to keep everybody happy. We, we do have bringing Asian flavors or right. some of the European, just to find that comfort level. Uh -huh. uh, but we actually uh, adhere or subscribe to being west coast and local and right these are i mean california is 80 percent of the fruits and vegetables for the whole of north america so right. it's you know this is where you can get local strawberries in season right instead of the the stuff that you get in november right even though it comes from california but we have our own local wild strawberries and blackberries and right blackberries. so this is where even though it's been forced grown in the Central Valley or right. however you want to, but we actually take in in season locally sourced products ourselves. Right. So we we keep to that uh, local sustainable. Right. And that is part of the Fairmont, anyways. Is that we want to be known to be locally right. sustainable. It's funny that's such a buzzword now, uh, locally sourced and artisanal and that kind of thing. It's, yeah. But I think this is one place where ten years ago, that's before it was doing. a buzzword, that's what you were doing yeah. anyway. Yeah. You know, it, um, it's it's funny. I mean, I've worked on and off for Fairmont for right. twenty years. Uh, recycling. When I started with Fairmont, it was the first place I've ever actually been to where recycling was done right to the degree that it is is now i think a lot of places are playing catch up right to what has been become the norm within the company right. uh, for so long right and things that i'm seeing now coming onto the market to help make the hotels a lot more sustainable right uh, uh, we've been doing that for 20 right. years so it's i think other people are catching up to us right um, we keep pushing. I mean, there's still items or, or things I'd love to do uh, in the future that, you know, get a few people, on, a few more people on board or um, get, get their, their mind working slightly outside the box. Right. Be, be fantastic. And last question, if you would, usually I start out with this, but can you tell me a little about yourself and what brought you to the Fairmont? Um, well, like I say, I, I've worked at uh, the Hamilton Princess, i worked at the in Bermuda, uh, which is now a Fairmont. Uh, I've worked at the Algonquin in New Brunswick. Uh, I was uh, originally from England. Uh -huh. uh, like I say, I've worked at Bermuda, Antigua, and across Canada. Uh, I came back, I, I found that after working with Starwood for, for nearly 10 years, there was something that drew me back. Um, and I believe, I mean, apart from it's, it's a very sustainable company, uh -huh. uh, the way it's always the guest is first. Uh, we want to please the guest. Right. It's not all about the money. Um, the guests, it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier for us to uh, find guests and have them keep returning than it is to keep finding fresh guests. Right. 
all the time. So the relationships you build with guests on a continuous basis, I mean, we have, I've only been here a year, and we have people that I've seen four or five times. Right. And get, so you're building those relationships right. with, even with guests that I don't, wouldn't normally see. And it's, it's more like a family. Right. You know, it, it's it's uh, maybe not the biggest company, but right. it's still very much a family. And that's, and that's it's a big draw, for, especially for people like my, myself. Right. If you have that personal connection with, with a guest, then you can start to, to there's certain items they don't like or they right. do Right, you like know what stuff. they like. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then you can, you can really make that memory for right. them. It's like, like oh, that, Hey, I know you yeah. like apples, so I made you this special yeah, thing and, and with apples. Yeah, they remembered us from last time, so everybody gets that their own personal experience. And as a kid growing up, what kind of food were you eating in your house? Um, well, it's funny. My grandmother was a great cook. Uh -huh. my, mother, my mother was uh, uh, not so much. Uh -huh. but my grandmother always used to be. Uh, and was it a certain ethnic uh, kind of food or uh, no, typical not so British? Much. Typical British. Uh, I wouldn't say it was what was supposedly the typical British, right. but uh, you know, we, lots of fresh chickens, uh, fresh fish was was fantastic for us. I mean, we, you know. Uh, um, Especially in the 70s and late 70s, and the, the items as transportation got bigger, right. uh, got more effective. The fish that was coming in, right. even to our area, was you know, which is Birmingham. Yeah, Birmingham. Yeah, uh, and it's a it's it's a big hub of of. Uh, transportation through, through the UK, it was, you know, we get to see all these different things. Right. You know, you have the fish man come every Thursday and you had, you know, the freshest uh, card and halibut you would right. ever, ever see. So it was always about, and even back then, it was always about having something fresh right. and, and trying something that was in season. It's like, I remember my grandmother used to say, you know, those aren't in season, they're not going to, Right. it's not going to taste good. Right. You know, for somebody who's this big, it's like, well, but it, it's there. They're selling it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But even, so it, it was a it was a little lesson that I learned, and over the years, it's right. like, I know exactly what she's talking about now. Right. So, and yeah. uh, along the same lines, what was the first moment, uh, maybe working somewhere or cooking, when you thought to yourself, you know what, I would like to do this, or this could be my career, you know what I mean? Was that at home? Was it a first job uh, that you it, happened to have? Actually, it just so happened to be uh, when I was with my grandmother. Uh -huh. she, she was making these gravies. She was making these fantastic gravies. Uh -huh. um, it's like just sitting, standing there watching her. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but, I'm, but that's this is just what it is. Right. She used to make the best roast potatoes. She used to uh, blanch the roast pota the potatoes first before she roasted them. Right. They used to be so soft on the inside and crisp on the outside. And it was just those sort of memories right. of how, how she used to do things and, and what the watching her from the beginning and then having this plate in front of us, it was it just sort of struck me at the time. Right. Uh, that's, that's something that's I would something, like to do. That's so I'd love to know how to do that. Right. And it's just something that's served me very well. Cool. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you, Fred. Thank you.